you know, black cumin is said to be the cure for everything except death. And what a fantastically interesting statement that is, especially if it is at all true. Just think about it. The cure for everything except death. That statement means that this substance, black cumin, would have to benefit you and me in such a deep, systemic bedrock level doing nothing other than like promoting the physical formation of life itself across multiple organ systems throughout our entire life here on earth and how cool would it be if that actually turned out to be remotely true well when you get into history and research of black cumin you, you understand whoever made that statement wasn't too far off from the truth now that's a rabbit hole so let's unpack it um, so in order to do that, I actually need to talk briefly about a physical phenomenon that goes on out there in the world. And it, it's a phenomenon called weathering. And what do I mean by that? Real quick, I'm not talking about today's going to be sunny and tomorrow's going to be rainy. I'm talking about the, the phenomenon wherein if I take anything and I set it outside and I expose it to light, heat, air, oxygen, water, over time, that substance is going to change and morph even ever so slightly into something else. You know, just think about, you know, you bought a car 10 years ago. You walk outside and you're looking at your car and you think, man, something happened to my paint between now and the time I bought it. And it does not at all look as shiny as it did. What the hell happened? Anyway, that whole process is called weathering. Now, the interesting thing is that corrosive element that goes on out there in the world is also going on in my body. There's just a few differences. So out there, it's called weathering. In my body, I don't call it weathering. I call it oxidation. As the process develops and unfolds, out there, I call it erosion. But in my body, I call it denaturation. And this, my friends, is where the rubber meets the road. Now, let me put this into context. So you're made of proteins. I'm made of proteins. Uh, we're structurally built of them, and they are responsible for all oh, like the doings of our body. They can, they can transport this uh, to over here, inside of my body. They're very, very fundamental. Now, they have really complex, really cool structures to them and folds to them. I mean, they have like a primary, a secondary, a tertiary, a quaternary fold to them. And they just look like these magnificent structures. But anyway, it is a fundamental understanding, like throughout all of biology, that the fold of something, the structure of something, what it physically looks like, will dictate what it can actually do in my body. Now, this has fundamental health complications for you and me. So, uh, uh, microscopically, a denatured protein can interfere with the, the function of a cell, and as that process continues, it can take one cell and turn it into a group of cells that interferes with the function of a whole, arg of a whole organ, and just, you multiply that. It is a very poisonous, detrimental force that we have to fight throughout our entire life. Um, now, is there something we can do to actually uh, stop this from happening, slow it down, mitigate it in some way, shape, or form? Well, yes, there is. Um, this is where black cumin comes in. Well, I'm about to get to it. So, in order to fight this, we need antioxidants. Ta-da! Now, real quick. There's actually, we, okay, so we have a primary antioxidant network and we have a secondary antioxidant network, or there's a hierarchy there. So real quick, when I say the word antioxidant, I know most of us think, okay, we know antioxidants are healthy and we get them from maybe, I don't know, green tea, maybe your chocolate, maybe your, your coffee or your, your blueberry, for example, and those are good. Yes, there's really, really cool, but two problems. Or let's talk about them real quick. So let's just say there's uh, oxygen in my body that's going to denature one of my proteins, okay? I don't want that to happen. I need to neutralize it. So let's say I eat some blueberries and I say, uh, oh, hey, no, oxygen, don't do that. Here's the blueberry. And the blueberry works and it neutralizes the, that free radical, that corrosive element in my body, and it, uh, my body's able to detoxify it. That's really, really cool, but 
here's the problem. The problem is it's a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning one oxygen, one blueberry, they meet and they detoxify. I mean, that seems normal and cool, but the, the issue lies in this. I have one oxygen ad infinitum, meaning like an unlimited supply. That means because blueberries work on a one-to-one -one ratio, I would have to eat blueberries 24 hours a day, you know, you know, seven days a week, like forever, just to get that constant drip. Just need to, you know, stick an IV in my arm. Anyways, you, you get the big picture. Now, the other issue is, even if I eat the blueberry, let's say I need that antioxidant power in my big toe but I have no idea of controlling and accurately guessing where the antioxidant in the blueberry is gonna go. I might need it in my big toe, but it goes to my ear. Not cool. So those are two kind of major fundamental things. And now, blueberries are great, okay? The antioxidants, we definitely need them and they play their role, especially for helping our blood to stay clean. But we need, as I said, to fight this weathering principle on earth and our body can do it and it can do it even better with the help of black cumin this is where the magic is of black cumin so remember how i said there's like a there's a primary and secondary like a hierarchy this is where the big boys come in the the, the nice powerful antioxidants that we can actually make thank god now real quick what are they we make these powerful antioxidants. Um, three of them are called catalase, glutathione and or glutathione peroxidase, and superoxide dismutase. Now, just in me making this video, I am internally creating energy. And as a, a, an unintended byproduct or an intended byproduct of that energetic creation process, I'm creating even more powerful, corrosive weathering agents internally inside my body. Uh, things like um, superoxide or hydrogen peroxide or peroxynitrate or the hydroxyl radical. These things are so much more powerful than just the little oxygen guy that the blueberry can melt. I mean, these guys, the, the more powerful pro-oxidants, denaturing elements will literally melt me from the inside out. Not cool. So let's put this in the context real quick. So remember how I said the blueberry works on a one-to-one -one ratio? Well, let's say, for example, the antioxidants that I can make, the more powerful ones, these guys are actually enzymes, antioxidant enzymes. And this is the cool thing about them. So let's say I make the even more powerful pro-oxidant, the weathering substance, the superoxide, a really powerful oxygen. Well, my body makes that beefy um, antioxidant. It's called superoxide dismutase. So let's say I have a million of these guys, the bad guys. Just one of these antioxidants that I make can neutralize one million of them. So the ratio isn't one to one. It's one to one million. And the cool thing is, as the blueberry gets used up in the process with that one oxygen, this enzyme antioxidant that my body can make neutralizes one million and then gets out. It's still active. And then a million more pop up and he's in, he's out, he's in, he's out. So this is how it works. So it is insanely more powerful than almost anything that I can eat in my diet, my body can make it. And black cumin it activates a, an epigenetic pathway in my body. Real quick, let me break that down. Epigenetics um, has to do with, okay, so I have genes, but not all of my genes are expressed at the same rate all the time. Um, epigenetics is kind of the study of things that we are thinking, um, things we are exposed to in our environment or things that we're eating how do they play in helping to express certain genes that I have? Now, it just so turns out that black cumin, that thing that has been described as being the cure for everything except death, activates an epigenetic pathway in my body that leads to an increase of those super powerful 
enzymatic antioxidants that help my proteins stay safe from that denaturing process. So remember, just to back up, when my protein gets denatured, broken, corroded, eroded, it can potentially cause any type of organ failure in my body, which is not cool. And this is why somebody said, wow, that I, I gave some, you know, some weathered person, some person that had more age on their body, some person that was battling some sickness, and I started giving them this black cumin. It activated some epigenetic pathway in their body that caused an internal expression, an increased expression of those powerful um, antioxidant enzymes in such a way this person looks healthier. They're, they're acting more healthy. I mean, they're, they look happier. Real quick. If you know anybody with any type of neurodegenerative disease disorder whatsoever, you can assume that they are low on glutathione or glutathione peroxidase, one of those powerful antioxidant enzymes that we make. If you know anybody who has arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, joint pain, discomfort, stiffness in their body somewhere, you can assume, wow, they're probably low on superoxide dismutase, one of the powerful good guys in our body, the powerful antioxidants. If you know anybody with any type of organ failure whatsoever, you can assume, well, that person's probably low on catalase and the other two. I mean, these guys affect every organ system 100% of the time. Now, remember I said, I don't know where the blueberry is gonna affect my body. Like I need it in my big toe, but it goes to my ear. See, black cumin helps the internal expression systemically, meaning uh, my body, all the cells in my body will start producing these antioxidants at such um, an increased uh, a way that, wow, we actually notice some benefits from it. And that, my friends, is really, in my opinion, why somebody would say, wow, this really could be the cure for everything. Now, I'm not going to say, here, take this, black cumin, it will cure anything in your body. But I am saying, man, the history and the research of black cumin is so powerful, everybody should have it in their cabinet. Now, real quick. What do we use black cumin for today? And just real quick summary, what are some A, B's and C's like anecdotally, experimentally, what do we use it for? Uh, let's just go down the list really, really quick. Um, black cumin is used to help uh, laryngitis, pharyngitis, bronchitis, tonsillitis, and let's actually, it, it's great for asthma. Um, there's an interesting substance in black cumin, it's called thymoquinone. It's actually a great bronchodilator. So, Anybody with asthma typically experience uh, a great relief. And actually, now that I remember, I'm thinking about it, um, black cumin likes to modulate a particular white blood cell. It's called an eosinophil. And this little guy sometimes just congregates around our lungs and it causes swelling and uh, it constricts us internally and it just makes us not feel good. And uh, anyway, Black cumin likes to modulate that little guy. Uh, there, there's actually a, a type of asthma, it's called eosinophilic asthma. So black cumin comes in and says that to that, you know, the little guy. He's helping us out. He's like, black cumin is like, yo, dude, I really, really appreciate you. I'm glad that you're helping us out, you know, fighting those invaders, whatever. But look, you're suffocating me. You need to calm down. Anyway, so that's what happens. So it is a great beautifier for the skin. Moving right along. Um, it's also good at activating um, osteocytes and turning them into osteoblasts. Now, what does that even mean? Uh, especially for women or postmenopausal women where our bone density uh, is at question, black cumin activates the little guy who actually crawls along our bone and our bones and, and enhances the strength of them. So it's great for just increasing our skeletal system. Moving right along, um, it's really, really good for digestion. It's great for your uh, liver, your stomach, your pancreas, but I want to focus on one little aspect. Uh, real quick, uh, this little bug, this little son of a gun, uh, he's called H. pylori, and he affects millions of people. Um, 
he creates something called uh, pneumonia in our stomach. Um, I mean, ammonia. I said pneumonia. He, he, anyway, he creates ammonia in our stomach, which neutralizes our stomach acid and make us sick. Now, why do we care? Well, this little bug, this H. pylori, is the leading cause of heartburn, acid reflux, GERD, and as this little son of a gun makes himself at home, uh, can lead to ulcers in our stomach, and then further along develop, uh, uh, we could develop cancer. Not cool. Anyway, black cumin likes to kill that guy, so any type of digestive disturbance typically gets improved. And while I'm thinking of digestive disturbances and millions of people, there's also something else, really, really quick. There's something called metabolic syndrome. This is a video in and of itself. I'm just going to briefly mention the, one of the fundamental things that cause metabolic syndrome, real quick. Um, metabolic syndrome is when we have high blood pressure, high blood sugar, we have a lot of fat in our blood, so the high uh, triglycerides, high cholesterol, um, and we're also probably on, basically on the way of developing type 2 diabetes. Maybe we have like a belly um, or we are becoming obese just all around. This whole thing that goes on in millions of people worldwide, we actually have given it a name and it's called metabolic syndrome. Black cumin is excellent for anybody suffering with any of that because all of that stems from a common source and that is insulin um, desensitivity. So our cells can become unsensitive to the insulin that we're producing and as a result throws all these other metabolic processes out of whack, throws them awry, and then they're just not functioning good. Anyway, <laughs> remember how I said uh, black cumin activates an epigenetic pathway called NRF2 that helps us produce more of those powerful enzymatic antioxidants. we we'll also can do that in relation to our ability to appropriately metabolize fat and increase our sensitivity to insulin. So anybody with metabolic uh, disorder, metabolic syndrome, um, really should check out black cumin. I'm on, this is millions of people. Black cumin also increases uh, acetylcholine in our body. So anybody, like I said, aside from the enzymatic thing, any type of neurological fallout, black cumin is also excellent for. And so many more other things. Uh, I'll probably talk about them in another video. Anyway, I thoroughly recommend black cumin. And uh, actually, I just got, I got to mention this real quick. You know, black cumin is said to be the cure for everything except death. Well, that's really, really similar to another substance, which is known as the destroyer of weakness and the builder of health. This substance is called shilajit. And you know how black cumin physically protects the formation of life or proteins from denaturation and in that way benefits every organ system throughout our entire life and fights that weathering process? Well, shilajit actually increases the voltage of life, which is incredibly important. So we know a cell, when the voltage drops, it can no longer do its duties. It can't perform its job appropriately. You know, our body uses electricity um, inside and out the cell to create these voltage channels where things can flow in and out. Anyway, incredibly important. Um, and the combination of the cure for everything except death and the destroyer of weakness and the builder of health, i.e., Black cumin, shilajit, such a powerful combination. It's actually really cool. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoy it and cheers.